Welcome back, Blade fans. This old sword with you, and we're endeavoring upon something a little different and more complex today in terms of the number of items on the table. So bear with me as this may get put together in a string of uh, multiple takes, but it should look pretty smooth to you in the end. I have a lot of items on the table. I have a few off to the side because I couldn't fit everything in the frame. But as you <clears throat> can obviously observe, we are taking a look at karambit knives today. And um, quick overview from Wikipedia. Sure, why not? The karambit with a K-A, or Karambit with a K-E, also spelled multiple other ways, is a small Indonesian curved knife resembling a claw. And it is from the Minang Kabau people of West Sumatra. If I didn't pronounce that correctly, my apologies to the people of that area. And I'll go on to say that this is seen a lot of use in martial arts by practitioners of both Filipino and Indonesian uh, martial arts, namely Penjak Salat uses this knife a lot. And there are two modes of use. One is point forward, and the other is point down, with the point or edge pointing forward. And having been designed as a claw initially, I have automatically filtered out knives that have rings on them that are called karambits, but may have a straight blade. We're going to focus today on the original concept of the karambit, which is the curved blade, hawksbill blade, whatever you'd like to call it, hawksbill, certainly. Uh, talking about the beak of a bird, animal claw, tiger claw, what have you, um, is another way of looking at this knife. So without rambling on too much, what I'm planning to do is to take a quick look at each of these and then set it aside so that we make the scene a little less complex over time. Okay, here we go. I don't know why I picked this one up first, but this is the Mantis Mrs. Smith, and uh, they're referring to the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. You may have seen that, kind of a neat movie about uh, husband and wife, uh, spies, assassins, uh, undercover, what have you. And this is uh, neat in a number of different ways. It's a relatively inexpensive blade. I think it's no more than 30 or $40. However, they give you a nice sheath setup, molded sheath, not kydex. And it will fit in either direction. Yep, just prove that. So. It'll thumb off very easily. Got a multi-position clip. So you can hang it either way on your belt or sideways, I believe. Mostly sideways. And it's got some slots here for lashing it, what have you. It's very small. Not 100% sure of the steel. I think they're just going with like a 440 something like that has the interesting hole pattern and as I was saying the karambit knives this is very small but very compact and still very useful it can be held in either of these two positions with either the pinky through the ring or not or the index finger through the traditional karambits had the point more or less directly forward in the, for the Indonesian Penjaksalat styles. Um, this is angled 
more towards the straight side. But we'll hopefully discuss those advantages and disadvantages as we move along. I'm reaching off camera for an unusual piece that I actually ordered directly from Indonesia. And this is more your traditional karambit. And I wanted to show you this because many of the more modern ones are lacking this coxcomb, if you want to call it that, which has a use. So this is, you know, f sort of on the crude side, but it is uh, layered, Damascus steel. It's forged in kind of a little campfire sort of arrangement. Has a hardwood two-tone handle, riveted, and a pretty large ring. What you see with this is that the point is almost directly forward. And this is used for to pierce and rip. And this can be directed uh, into the eye sockets, so on and so forth. I won't get too detailed. And uh, <clears throat> I will say at this point, too, that if you're interested in how the crambit is used, I would look no further than Doug Markaita. Uh, who is a Filipino Kaliist martial artist, but has uh, put a, a lot of focus on the karambit and has designed a few along with uh, Bastion Cove of Bastinelli Knives. Um, the other person I would uh, recommend, if you can still get his videos, is Steve Tarani. He's designed some knives for Benchmade and 511, and um, he has uh, put together quite an extensive system from his study of the Indonesian martial arts of Penjak Salat. So this comb here is used when you're trapping and it will cut. And many karambits have double edge for that reason. But this is very traditional. Very sharp prickly serrations there <clears throat> on the, uh, the back of the blade. I'm going to put that aside, and we were talking about Steve Tarani, so wrong one. Let's bring out the Journeyman, produced by 511. I don't think that this is currently in production. At the time, this was the less expensive model. I think it went for around 110, 120. Uh, and then there was a master model, so we got obviously the relationship there, journeyman and master. Um, this is an excellent knife. Notice the crescent shape of the whole thing. That design fits superbly in the hand with the point forward. And it's a lockback knife. It's from 154 CM. No flipper. It's all thumb. Roll it out like that. It has a uh, forward kind of uh, lock release rather than the rear lock release. Kind of indicative of some of the cold steel designs. The entire handle is from G10. Again, uh, it's pretty, pretty much sought after these days because, um, again, I don't know how uh, available it is. You have jimping in all of the finger grooves in a very smooth ring. Obviously, you've seen these spun. I mean, spinning is not really a necessary thing. Basically, you hold it in the hand either this position or this position. And again, there are two schools of use. A lot of uh, the schools of karambit use exclusively hold it in this position, while others hold it in both or predominantly in this position. So that is the um, Journeyman, designed by uh, Steve Tarani for 511. Um, Tucson makes a number of karambits, I think three or four maybe. This one is the TS-61. I believe it's a night-morning design. Yes, it is. 
probably it's the most unusual looking karambit on the table. The way you have the recurve in here and a very defined point. The only thing with this one I've found is that your hand, if you're spinning it, comes very close to the termination of the edge in that point. Otherwise, um, very effective, has the point forward, angled way forward, and obviously you've got a tremendous amount of slashing and cutting power here, no matter which way you hold it. Uh, this particular one is from uh, Sandvik, 14C28N has a nicely uh, machined ridged G10 of uh, two colors like a gray and a black. Has some jumping up here for, gr for grip. I think I just nicked myself on that very <laughs> that very part that I said to be careful of. Well so the lesson there is always respect the blade. I'm back with a band-aid. <laughs> Told you we do this in multi-takes. Um, yeah, this is kind of a problem and I think on my other one I have two of these. One in D2 and this one's in Sandvik as I was starting to say. It's just to, you don't really need that point so I'm probably going to hit it with a file so that doesn't happen again. <laughs> and uh, very nice kydex sheath with a uh, tech lock style uh, belt attachment and it seems like uh, Tucson is always supplying very good kydex sheaths with their fixed blade knives the other lesson I'm learning here is that uh, or have learned probably in the past but don't respect is that as I'm looking through the camera I'm not seeing the same perspective as in real life. <laughs> Thus, I'm going to try to look off to the side as I handle the rest of these so we don't have any further mishaps. Okay, so uh, another one that's kind of interesting, and I think this is by United Cutlery. <clears throat> I don't even know if they're made anymore. It's a Gil Hibben design. 440C, skeletonized. And this was designed, and I wish I could remember the fellow's name, down in... Uh, I think North Carolina, who is a um, martial artist, and he designed it with these striking prongs. They're dull, but very effective uh, as kind of an enhancement. You do see these on some of the traditional ones. Let me verify. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's definitely a Gil Hibben design. And, oh, here's the guy's name right here. Nope, Gil Hibben. Sorry about that. Uh, it was, it's a Gil Hibben design, but I think someone else was involved in it. And i um, pretty sure it's United Cutlery. Comes with a kind of pedestrian, but good, thick, welted leather sheath. And uh, at the time, I think these were only going for about 15 or 20 bucks. A bunch of these went to some martial arts students of mine back when we were focused on the karambit. We bring things in a little bit. And here's something by um, Cricket called the Karaman. I'm going to try to get you the design. It's a Fultz design. And the Fultz designs for these mini knives come in a lot of different blade shapes. This is the one that is very karambit like. And only a three finger knife. You can use the uh, uh, little um, cord at the end lanyard. Thank you. Has a little extra grip, but you're only going to get three fingers on it, but you can make a fist. And uh, very pointy, very rippy little blade. Um, I prefer something I can get all my fingers on, but 
it's kind of neat. And I think this is a, um, you know, say, but I think it's like an OS 8 steel. Nothing really great, but certainly serviceable. And uh, somewhere around here, yeah, I do. I have the sheath for it. It's just a basic molded sheath. And it is set up like a neck knife. You could probably just drop it in the pocket too and thumb it off. All right, well, we're slowly getting down there. Most of these have been in the collection for a bit. Some are newer. Um, here's the old standby from Spyderco. They're offering the Karahawk. This one is from VG10. Has a wave opening feature. And they do give credit to Ernest Emerson for it. So the way I have it set up, and I put a uh, aftermarket titanium clip on there for a little deeper carry, because you're going to have to have the ring to pull it out, is um, I put this in the right side pocket, and it opens that way. But you can put it in the left side pocket, even better, and it will open in the proper point down position. Kind of neat. And this is a Kiran bit with a little less forward point. Um, you know, that doesn't make it less effective. Uh, just kind of is tuned to um, the use that the uh, practitioner decides to put it to. This obviously is still going to do a heck of a job and it's quite sharp. Uh, center back lock on this one with your little uh, half moon cut out there which makes it a little less easy to accidentally disengage. That is the Karahawk by Spyderco. One of my favorites, I do have a few favorites, is the um, Enforcer by Browse Blades. This is an import. It's a D2 blade. But um, it is an amazing pocket opener using this comb. Unfortunately, it looks like the clip will flip-flop, but it won't. You got a spacer there because this clip is dedicated to the left side. So I carry it left side when I do carry it for EDC, and I do occasionally carry a karambit for EDC. And the comb right here on the back is the wave opening and it is rocket fast. It's fairly thick. It is mostly molded FRN. When it's in the hand it has that definite Indonesian Penjax a lot point forward for thrusting and for ripping. It besides being opened out of the pocket can be flipped open, but the flipper is so far forward, you really need to front flip it with the thumb. But for me, I mainly deploy it out of the pocket using that. Very easily just grab it by the ring, push forward on the pocket, front of the pocket opens the blade and there you are. It's a very short throw, it's only about 90 degrees. So, um, again, as far as an effective, useful karambit, for about 40 bucks, I think, this is probably the deal of the day. Homing in on some fairly special ones here. Well, let's go here first. This is one I did a review on. This is the um, Raptor by DEFCON comes through with um, 
S35 VN steel, premium steel, all titanium handle. It's probably the fanciest, most artsy uh, rampant that I have. Comes out of the box with a plug that screws in there. It's a blue color, like looks like titanium. It's that color blue right there. Um, that blocks the uh, wave opening feature. I took it out since I do like the wave opening feature. This is a quick opening with a flip, the flipper tab as well. Um, nice features. You've got plenty of room and you got a guard on this one with the, uh, for the finger. You can put your thumb here. It's kind of a soft jimping. On top, there's no jimping, but there's a platform. And it's just um, kind of a nasty blade. Somebody wrote me back after the review that uh, they had bought this based on the, the review, opened it up, and first thing they loosened up on it, it fell, <laughs> hit their leg, and fortunately missed all the important stuff. But um, it is a very nasty point on this guy. Not that the rest of them don't have one, but again, that point forward design, it's you just got to watch it because they get hung up on things and catch things if you're playing with them. Not your typical uh, fidgety flipper toy, but a very, very well made one. The, uh, the DEFCON Raptor. All right, well, we've got it down to the last two here. And I know that this is a long video, so you're probably skipping forward to the ones you like. That's fine. Whatever suits your tastes. So this one is the Alien 2 by Reich. Fixed blade. Very neat brown burlap micarta. Uh, the blade steel on this one isn't mentioned here, but I believe it's either N690 or 154CM. You can check my review, and I, uh, I let you know on that review what it is. But an interesting fixed blade design. Comes in... Very nice Kydex sheath. Again, Reich does a great job, as does Tucson, with their Kydex and a tech lock. Fairly easy to thumb it off. You got a skeletonized blade, you got a skeletonized handle, and um, it doesn't have a very pronounced forward curve, but it definitely is a karambit curved knife. This one works very well in the blade up position. You got a thumb ramp here. You don't even need to put your fingers through the hole and uh, very comfortable holding it in that position. I'm going to put this puppy away. Karambits you got to watch them putting that point in because they hang up sometimes on the sheath. That boils down to what I have to say is lately my favorite karambit. It's a folding karambit by Tucson. It is designed by Mazwan Mokhtar. It is the TS-242 out of M390. The most premium steel of all the karambits that I currently have. All titanium handle. It is minus a clip. And Mazwan says that in working with uh, some of the people in his area, and I believe he is from some area of Indonesia where the knife had its birthplace, that um, they just either carry it in the pocket or they carry it in, in the waistband. It can be opened with a flipper on the front. Not all in one move. Or easier. You can use the thumb hole and um, can spidey flick it as well. It is a frame lock with a hardened steel insert. Beautiful carbon fiber scales. 
And again, just aesthetically, as well as in the hand, ergos, I would say this is my favorite with a couple others that are kind of close to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll leave you with the uh, TS-242 there on the screen. And uh, if you are interested in Karambit use, again, please check out um, anything by Doug Markaida on YouTube, uh, Steve Tarani, and I'm sure there are a few others um, out there that are doing a lot of good Karambit work. Um, a lot of very intense technique, and they definitely know what they're doing. I've used it to some degree in my background in Filipino martial arts, but uh, has a certain fascination, as I'm sure it does for many of you. So this old sword signing out, and thanks for bearing with me in this lengthy video. We'll try to do some other collections up the line, um, thinking of doing favorite Wii knives, favorite best tech knives, stuff like that, where we've got multiple blades on the table. Be well and take care. Don't forget again to subscribe. This old sword signing out.